Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome back to Anime King. And today I'm gonna be giving you part four of What If Naruto Was Insane with a Powerful Bloodline. Remember to get this one to 100 likes as usual. Share this to all of your friends in your social media platform. And also, guys, stay in tune for the rest of what is coming your way over on Anime King. Two and any making three. If you're new, yes, you heard that correctly. Indeed, have three channels: any making, any making two, and making three, which I post what you find every single day for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the making family. And thank you for all of your help and support. Remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new. I'll be playing talking back to all of you. So yeah, without further ado, would you say begin this new episode? Start the intro. So the last spot we left off, Naruto was still in a nightclub. As he opened a syringe, it turns out that he's been working with Orochimaru. As Naruto pumped the liquid inside of the ventilator that spread air through the club. As he placed on his mask and waited, chaos then started to ensue outside. As Naruto waited, as this was a drug that drive people insane, it increased their reflex strength and sight, hearing, everything. But it also would drive them crazy. They would be dead after 10 minutes, but it was a distraction that he wanted. So with that, they spread through the village as Naruto made his way. As it was a trap and everyone knew that, he knew as well. As he made his way towards where the Shibe, the clan head of the Aberami was, and Shikaku with the clan head of the Nara. Arriving out there, Naruto slaughtered a few Anvo before he was surrounded by Ro, Team Ro, as that was the team which Kakashi was in charge of. As Naruto explained to each and every one of them what he was going to do to them, they did not seem like they believed him, but as the fight ensued, Naruto burned one of them. He ripped out one of their spine as he forcefully beat them so badly. As Kakashi was unable to do a thing, as Naruto showed him that he was much superior to them, as he told Yujiro that he used to like her, he had the biggest crush on her, while he was shoving her kidney down her own throat, as he grabbed Kakashi afterwards and made his way, only to realize that he was surrounded by a hive, but massive blue tails came out of him, as it was a his power as he decimated everything around him. He hit Shikaku with something to allow. The ventilation of the smoke in the man's lungs, which would slowly kill him in the most painless way possible, as Naruto took Shibi and beat him with a bat. Before he brought him to the village, as he brought him right to the tower, luckily, Snelly was not there as she had made her way off when Naruto gave the fake signal. As Naruto threw the man as he exploded, his bugs being highly poisonous. So with that, some days pass since that incident. As Naruto was pretending to be someone else as he was working at the Yamanaka flower shop ever since her husband died and Naruto started to work there. The woman was grateful for him and her 12 year old daughter Ino seemed to have the biggest crush on Naruto as he was pretending to be someone that he was not until Kabuto called him. As Naruto looked outside as he saw the man as he excused himself as Kabuto asked him if he enjoyed doing what he was doing as he met up with Urchimaru in the forest of death. As Naruto of course enjoyed, he was gonna plant himself in each of the families. He was gonna gain their trust, their loyalty, then he was gonna tear it all down. As Urchimaru came to him with some information, the body that was found in his apartment so long ago was not Jaren. As the puppeteer, yes, saucer of the Red Sand, was responsible for it. As Urchimaru had seen his work many times before seeing that they were on the same group, Known as the Akaski, but that was not the only thing. 
When they went to the lab, there was high concentration of Uzumaki chakra there. As Urchimar told her that his mother and father was indeed dead, but there was something else then. It was also connected to him, and Ruth hasn't been there that meant he had a twin. He had a sister or brother that was born on the exact day that he did. As Urchimar told him that the birth was not really known by many, there was just only a few individuals, and not even Urchimar knew the full expectancy of everything. So perhaps there was two children. So where was the other one then? And where was Jiraiya? And why did Saucer decide to plan to fake death on Naruto? Many things were not adding up. But Naruto intended to find out what was going on there as well. So yeah guys, it was basically let's play the topic guys game. Switch across the place and check it out for yourself. So this will begin this new episode. You think I have a twin? Said Naruto as he looked towards Urchimaru and his apprentice. It is our first guess, but we're not entirely sure. Naruto rolled up the scroll as he stuffed it in his pocket. I'll deal with it later, he said. He was past another scroll, a bigger one, as he opened it. A pleasant smile came on his face as he skimmed over the scroll. A new set of weapons to replace. The ones that you broke. You have a different type of chakra that I'm not used to handling, but these weapons might seem stronger than the last ones. As Naruto nodded his thanks as he sealed them away in his arm. As he started to walk away, I put something really special in there. You just might like it, Urchimar said. As Naruto snapped his gaze towards him, I swear if it's another sex toy, I Urchimar laughed as he waved Naruto off. Relax, he said. I explained myself, didn't I? I got your scroll mixed up with a contact of mine. But then, it was just a simple mistake. Hmm, said Naruto. As he did not believe the man one moment, as he left in a blue wave of flames to start his next plan for destruction of Kanoha, he had created a general chaos and killed most of the major leaders that had commanded most of the respect and could have controlled the frantic paranoia. Tasume, Shigaku, Shibi. No matter how much ninjas were stationed around the village, and no matter how much time they searched the houses, they would never find him. He was a master of disguise and an excellent actor. He has around a dozen disguises, around Konoha alone. And these personas, which were only disguises, were quite convincing. Enough to pass through any ninja radar that looked through his record. At the moment he was in his Kurokaze, disguise, black hair, and deep tan. He could never transform his eyes, so he wore a cat that shaded his eyes. This disguise was stolen from a teen that he killed the first night in Kanoha for the simple purpose of alluring and befriending the Yamanaka family. The academy had been closed for the past few days because of the frequent murders and Nurt did not care if he had to kill a child. Children were to strictly stay indoors. That was the order given around the village. That wasn't all. All public associations, meetings, gathering has been banned by the fifth Hokage until further notice and this encompassed stores and shops as well the only shops that were left open were the groceries and supermarkets people were absolutely terrified to leave their houses even staying inside on their lock and key did not make them feel safe anymore the few people that was about looked around every few seconds even if they did see ninjas moving from building to building but Naruto preferred to work at night even if there was a dozen ninjas spread around they would never catch him it wasn't cockiness or that he was obnoxious, but it was just a simple statement, which was a truth. He didn't really have time to be proud, but he felt proud of his work. Yes, he did. Time skipped two hours later, after sunset. Hayuga compound. Darkness rose up from the ground. Twisted smile and those blue eyes. As he grabbed the Hayuga's neck and snapped it. As he gently lowered the man on the ground, his next target a man that was rubbing his eyes after overusing his Sharingan. A kunai came out of the holster on his right arm as he threw it. It stabbed right into the back of the man's neck. He stealthily moved on, rushing, on the rooftop. His eyes narrowed as he looked down the walkways of the clan that was devoid of life. Even at this time, people were too scared to come out. His hands flew behind him as his eyes were sharp and focused. His new dark blue overcoat did not make a sound either. As he made sure to sneak up on the guards through their blind spot of their dojutsu. 
as he ended them before they could even make a sound in surprise. As Naruto dropped down from the roof, his feet landed on the balcony of the clan head's house. The glass door was shut tight and the curtain was drawn to hide the person sleeping on the inside. As he used his chalker seal and chain to pry the door open slowly, he straightened up as he pushed his mask up. Hanabi jumped backwards as her back pressed up against the wall as a small creaking noise had woken her up. Her face was filled with nothing but dread and fear as this thing stepped towards her but despite how terrified she was, she raised her hand up just like her father had taught her as she pushed Chalker to them, making them sputter. With a lack of concentration, she was about to scream though until he moved and covered her mouth. Let's play a game, Hanabi, he said, as everything went dark for her. Later that day, when Neji was sent to call Hanabi for dinner, they found her ransom note. The content was straightforward and Hayashi felt chill ran down his spine. Follow my instructions and you just might see your daughter alive. Time skip. Sunset. Hokage's home office. Hokage's mansion. There were secrets that only the Hokage could access with the Hokage seal of secret. The Hokage was a dictator in every sense of the word. He did not need permission or approval of the people before he enacted and implemented a law that could or could not affect them. Hoshirama Senju had created a council for their insight on public opinion and for the reason to legitimize certain rules and to protect the position of Hokage to make sure that certain revolts and uprising were not waged against them. When the village had been carved out a large portion of Fire Country by the Fire Daimyo at that time, he gave the first and his successors part independence from his rule but total control over his territory which was Kanoha. The founding clans, which were the Uchiyas, Senjus and the Hayukas, agreed to sign. Whoever was popular and nominated to be Hokage would bear supreme power and any more clan that arrived will agree to be under the Hokage's law. So no matter how much they vow or had some disagreements, as they vowed to leave or anything like that, they could not because of the contract that they signed. As their rights were submitted to the Hokage and that made him a dictator. But there were certain things that the Hokage did not feel right to confide in the council, which he placed under the Hokage's seal. The seal had the authority to open doors that no one else could open but the Hokage and keep things under secret that no one else could know. It was so secretive that the only person knew of the seal was the Hokage. And those secrets were conserved until the Hokage decided to allow someone inside. The first thing that was put under the Hokage seal was the death of Hoshima Masenju, but that was for another time. One of the latest additions to the Hokage seal was the final years of the third Hokage, the murder of Jiraiya. Sir Tobi allowed his student to sway him that the prophecy of the great Toad Sage about how Naruto would be possessed by the Nine Kill Fox and he would bring about destruction of the very planet itself and that the only way to preserve the life of the people on the planet was to release a counter power that was equal to Naruto's. Naruto was becoming too strong and too fast. He was learning at an alarm rate and getting use of this rare bloodline that he possessed. Jiraiya had been consumed by the prophecy that the great elder Toad had told him. There was a few smaller predictions that always came through. So he believed that the larger one was indeed true. But in retrospect, Harrison Saratobi should have thought things through. He should have thought things through before going straight in. He would have realized then that framing a child for a murder of a famous ninja, shaming him before the entire village, giving the people an excuse to beat him as he was dragged through the crowd and the order for his will to live, to be crushed by the stomping that he got from the officers each day. It was a terrible idea. Vengeance. Vengeance was a great motivator to keep on living and when vengeance is planted into the mind of someone so young and it managed to fester and grow into something dark and wicked, it could not be stopped. Jiraiya had stole away Kase when all the dust had been settled and Minato and Kushina were dead, contacted an old acquaintance in the person of Sorcery of the Red Sand to make a fake dead body 
all funded by him and he used his knowledge of the higher chain to transport Naruto from one side of the village to the other. That is why he was suddenly teleported and no one knew why. None of the clan heads or elders knew about this secret but this did not make them innocent. They all knew that there was no way in hell that an 8 year old child can kill Asani. All of them knew that. And not to mention he just basically flashed from one side of the village to the other which was impossible but still they went with it. Harrison went with it as well while he knew everything but the sad thing was Harrison had passed away and he was not dealing with the after effects of what he did. Snathy was the one that was suffering from her teacher's judgment. She had to break the seal in order for Jiraiya and Itachi to return to the village. Her strategists Shikaku and Shibi were dead. Both of them died dreadful painful deaths and that wasn't all in which she was dead and Tasumi was clinically insane. The head of interrogations and hunters were respectfully out of commission. The ninjas started to doubt themselves that he could ever stop the serial killer and the black ops has made her aware of the villagers whispering of defecting to other villages. Some civilians had already packed and moved out of the village as they were afraid, really really afraid. But when they left Kanoha borders, they were just gone. They just disappear. Most likely the phantom had erased them before they could get anywhere. Danzo stated that he had no interest in danger his life, so he stayed in his hole, wherever his hole was, and the other elders had taken their family and moved towards Danzo's hole as well. Choza, Akimichi, and Koi, Kurama, had ordered all of their clan mates to return to their respective compounds. They hardly ever came out, on to hunt for food and clean clothes. Nothing was moving within the village, the economy had come to a stop, it had plummeted and it would take a long time for things to return back normal with the way things were going right now. The village hidden within the leaf was a ghost town now. Snavi was desperate letters and message to the village allies were not being replied to. She did not know that it would be cut off by ninjas of the sound. Kanoha was dying as her head was pumping from a headache as she rubbed the side of her head. It wasn't helping that the fool that stood in front of her did not feel remorse for his decision and he was shamelessly flirting with her. Snavi, being the best medic, had to attend to most of the victims as possible, seeing that some of their wounds were really really detrimental and she had to overtax her chakra. She was tired, she hadn't gotten a good night rest in days. Usually she could keep on going for a long while but she was now exhausted. She didn't even remember the last time she drank a good saucer of sick. Jiraiya, she said, as she had her arms folded on her decks and her head rested on it. She was too tired to deal with his shit, sadly he didn't notice. Where's Itachi? I thought I summoned him back as well. Jerry chuckled as he spoke. I told him to stay back. A vein throbbed in her forehead. Why, she said. He won't be of much help against the Kyube. I got this, said Jiraiya. Snelly closed her eyes as she got to her feet. No. As she moved towards the window. As she looked over the village that she has been appointed to oversee, with grim eyes, she could see the Hokage's tower covered in a massive tarp and a few Aberami moving in and out carrying a large metal box with poisonous bugs as they had on gas masks. They had been going at it for two days now and they still haven't found the queen. The ear was somber and depressing. Why did you tell Sensei to do what he did? His grin reduced as he moved towards her. He raised his hand to place it on her shoulder but she spoke, do not touch me. He raised his hand as he backed away two steps. As he looked at her wordly, what's wrong Haim, he said. Her shoulders sagged no matter how hard she tried to keep her face up to give her people hope that they would strive once again. She could not. She simply could not. You framed an innocent kid for your murder, she said. He did not sense so she tried to control her voice or how stiff her body was. Jerry shook his head. Didn't you get the memo? He's a Kyube and he had to be weakened. She did not react to his predictable words. It's unfortunate the pit only make it stronger but come on this is the Caillou. He was cut off. Do you know as she turned towards him. She stopped as she took a deep breath before she exhaled. Do you know how many people I had to watch die because of that kid? How many babies I was forced to watch as life left their eyes? Do you not notice what that boy has done to my village? You mean the Kyube said Jaraya correcting her. But she had more than enough. No idiot. The kid. 
We've been closing our eyes to the truth, saying that Naruto is dead and this is an imposter. But we all know that your corpse disappeared from the graveyard the day it started. As she stepped forward and jabbed a finger in his chest as he stepped back. That is not the Kyube. That's Naruto, she said. He laughed nervously. Fine. Let's all just calm down and... No! We can't calm down because we're not allowed to calm down, she said. Because Naruto won't allow us to calm down or regroup. She jabbed his chest painfully as she frowned. I read his report while he was still in the village. The weekly report, the school report, the psyche report, the weekly surveillance report. And they all always say that he doesn't have the time to hate this village. She jabbed him once again as his back almost hit the door. Now I have to deal with the mess that you and Sensei caused. Snaviheim, don't you think that you're overreacting? Her fist clenched, enough for her knuckles to pop. Overreacting? She repeated the word. He gulped as he pushed his back against the door. Well, yeah, the Kyube, I mean Naruto. Her fist glowed green as he started to shake to bash his head in. Sordo Bicente and I have countermeasures on how to best contain Naruto when this sort of thing happens. Her gaze focused on him intensely. What countermeasures? Why was I told about this, she asked. We agreed to leave it out of the Hokage seal, just in case Naruto found out about them. Level 0 seal, restriction seal, and high S rank. Ninjas that can take him out easily. And then, there's me, said Jiraiya. She glared at him for a long, five painful seconds. Get out, she said. As she stepped towards the window, he knew that she did not have faith in him or Yerzen's plan, as they were the ones that got them in this mess in the first place. She was right not to believe in his words. The countermeasures that Saratobe and the Toad Sage had set up had been training for years, finally succumbing to her chakra poison. Upon hearing that her brother Naruto had been wrongfully thrown into the fire pit, Jerry did not have any countermeasures but himself and Itachi. But his pride stood in the way. He refused to think a mere boy like this could cause so much problem in the village. He tried to stay faced though. Heim, he said. Go, she shouted at him. As her eyes drooped as she looked at the village. I don't want to ever see you again, Jiraiya, she said. Time skip. Time. It could not go by any faster. Hayashi Hayuga. Pace, back in front. In his office, his hands folded behind him. As he gripped his elbows, his Byakken eyes narrowed and pulsed, veins throb at the corners. He was alone. That was what the letter specifically stated, for him to be alone. He cast a hateful, disgusting look towards his desk where the scroll was, mocking, mocking him, showing him his inability to protect his own family. As he walked back in front, creating a track on his office for the hours that he has been pacing for now. His hands dropped to his side and flexed impatiently, popping and opening with each curl that he made. His hands went up and tied his hair into a long ponytail as he breathed in and breathed out. He took several more deep breaths to calm himself down as he could not hold up the stoic facade though. 11 hours and 57 minutes ago, his precious daughter Hanabi was taken from her room. The perpetrator spent about 10 minutes in her room before he eventually left with the girl. Just thinking about what that monster was doing to his child, his favorite daughter, made his blood boil as his heart sink. He heard a knock as he immediately walked towards his desk. It was time. He beat up the scroll as he read it once again. Follow my instructions and you just might see your daughter alive. There's a seal at the bottom of the scroll containing a video camera that will tell you what to do if you want to get Hanabi back alive. Do not unseal it before sunrise. If you want to take the rest and keep it, and do not do as I say. I will make sure that you get Hanabi's right leg. Deliver right to your doorstep. Another condition. No one, not even the other members of your clan, should find out that your daughter is kidnapped. Not the Hokage, not the council, and not your clan. I hope that is clear. We both know I could not care less if I had to chop her up and send her to you piece by piece. Perhaps you could assemble her again and arrange a proper funeral for her. I'm keeping your eyes though. Back to what I was saying the person. The reported they are missing should be sworn to secrecy. This is really simple. I'm sure that you don't get it wrong. Tell no one and wait till sunrise. See you soon. Hayashi unsealed the black video camera from the bottom. As he dropped the scroll on his desk, he held the video camera in his arm. As he pressed the play button, the video was dark. Hayashi heard soft footsteps as light started to illuminate the screen. As Naruto beamed at him and waved, 
Hello. As Nurt looked to his right, the camera got a look outside of the full moon to his right. The camera then returned back to him as Nurt is marked. Can you guess where I am, said Nurto. As he swept his arm around, he was in Hanabi's room. He laughed and turned the camera towards Hanabi's bed. Hayashi gritted his teeth as he saw his daughter. Thankfully, she was fully close. As she was curled up in a fetal position, she was breathing in and out. Her fingers twitched as she slept. Did you know that the kid snores? I knocked her out a second ago, and now she's snoring. That's pretty remarkable, don't you think? He slapped his forehead, oh yeah. You're waiting to hear what you have to do to get your kid back, right? I'm going to guess that you're nodding right now, so I'll continue. You see, it's quite simple. I want us to play a game, Lord Hayashi. It will be fun, I promise. Besides, in the end, you just might get Hanabi back, as he laughed in his hand. I don't want to get in the fact that I'm not an imposter, but the real deal. But we don't really have that much time for that now, do we? As he raised four fingers, there are four levels in this game, and each of them as you go down, get a lot harder, all for the grand prize of you getting your precious favorite daughter back. There are cameras placed around the village that will keep an eye on you as you play. And if I see that you're uncooperative to the creator, which is me, I will send over a large portion of Hanby's scalp over to your clan compound, along with a massive explosion. His eyes sparkled as he said those words, as he would definitely do that. Security was all around the village, but with how the blonde was running around them, Hayashi believed that there was indeed cameras around. After successfully completing a level, you will be led closer and closer to where to find Hanabi. You will find that your piece in the camera, and you are to put it in. But before that, let me go through the rules and tell you the exciting game. Tell no one about the game. Give no clue or hint no one about the game. Always listen to orders. They will be simple and straightforward, and I will allow you to process them at your own speed. You have only 24 hours to complete the game, or I will disassemble Hanabi and sell her eyes to the highest bidder. Hayashi teeth clench as his nose exhale as he fought his temper to control himself. As Naruto placed the camera down on the dresser, as he stepped back, as he rubbed his hands. Alright. The first level is to deactivate all, cage bird seal of all. The branch members of the clan. This part is very important. You will make a public announcement that your seal has been broken. As Naruto chuckled, Hayashi eyes went wide. Did he not know what will happen if he unlock all the cages? All of them? Of course Naruto knew. When you set a bird free, one that was locked away for most of their life, so they could barely remember their own life of freedom, there was going to be chaos. The branch clan had been dissatisfied for years. And it had went up even more when the phantom attack started to become closer and closer to home. The village could not protect them. They could not protect themselves against the phantom. Why were they being forced to stay here? Already, Hayashi had activated two seals. He had ordered it to kill two branch members when they tried to steal a master key to unlock the cages. The idea had been festering since. The cage bird seal was placed on many of them, but now it was boiling over. And now this boy wanted him to unlock all of those cages and set them all free. The first thing that will happen was the main house will get run over and all the members would get lynched. Then the former branch Hayuga members would rush into the village, steal what they could, overwhelm the ninjas and fled Konoha if most of them had not already gone already. Then about two years of bloodline would be watered out and spread that the Hayuga clan would be a distant memory. The loss of Konoha's strongest most influential clan would cripple the village forever, oh yeah. Naruto knew exactly what he was doing. Was Hanabi really worth all the destruction that a single act would result in? As Naruto hum, I'm guessing you're wondering whether her life is that expensive, right? How about a bit of incentive? As Naruto walked to the bed and he made sure Hayashi could see him and her. As Hayashi's heart started to beat rapidly, as Naruto pulled out a kuna from his coat, he spun it before. He bashed it on her knee. Crack. Her eyes snap open as a chop to the back of her neck knock her out once again. I'll give you 5 seconds to think about it, then I'll rip her leg off, unlock the cage. My eyes are everywhere, remember that. As he placed a kunai on her knee, 5, 4. Hayashi didn't even think as he bit his finger and rushed towards his necks and slide his bloody finger over a compartment, a seal, 3. As he pulled a finger-sized scroll and ran, his bleeding thumb over it. 
2. Key to Bird Seal Unlock High Shiel. And surprisingly, the video camera of the blonde counting stopped. My guess is that you've done what I said. You people are so predictable. As you release the girl's leg, ignoring the chilling, squishing sound it made as it flopped onto the bed. As he sat down on the edge of the bed as Heshi came around, focusing on the camera. Just think, old man. You'll be the very last Hayuka clan head. I mean, yeah, the free birds might relocate and form a clan, but, but still. And I was the one that made you do it. I bet you feel fantastic about right now, said Naruto. Oh, said Naruto as he looked at his watch. That's my time. I trust that you will announce that all the cage have been unlocked. And you will be told what to do through the earbud after completing this challenge. As Naruto gave him two big thumbs up. Oh, good luck. As he waved as the camera blinked off. Hayashi released a sigh as he looked towards the earpiece that was there in the side of the camera. As he picked it up and placed it in his ear. Time skip. Hayashi wasn't sure where Hinata was when all hell broke loose. It steps towards the meeting hall of the Tiger Clan, walking at a rather fast pace. Felt like chains were holding him down. As the others in the clan were surprised. Curiosity when they heard the clan head was summoning them for a meeting. Luckily, he spotted Hinata. As he stepped in front of her, as he leaned down and whispered in her ear, he told her to run out of the clan. Just run and find somewhere good to hide. Wherever she hid or who she hid with, she was not to trust any Hayuga until he find her himself. She nodded, too afraid to question him. As she ran, he did not move or do anything until he saw that she was long gone. Through the clan gates, Hayashi could not task his nephew Neji to look after her because Neji hated his cousin. As that was shown during the tuning exams, he couldn't trust anyone because anyone would sell him out to save their own skins. He had to worry about his immediate family and his extended family. As soon as he got Hanabi back, he would find a way to track Hinata. And then, they would run. They would run away from Kanoha to a safe house he had in Wing Country. The Hayu clan, both the physical gathering and the idea, was as good as dead. As he looked towards the members, as he stepped up towards the podium as he spoke, all the cage bird seals have been deactivated. The members were distrustful of that. You have all been freed, he said. As the main members turned their head towards the branch members, they looked at Hayashi but he was already walking away. The main members decided to flee instantly as Hayashi left. The branch members took a minute to process this as he saw the main members fleeing. And all hell broke loose. Hayashi heard screaming of death and chaos inside. The branch greatly outnumbered the main clan. Only a small fraction escaped and a handful of them lived. Hayashi feared for those that the branch allowed to live. Torture, rape, slavery. He was sure that either or all methods of revenge would be implemented on them because the branch member allowed those to live and they had them under their captive. The branch started to loot his clan, breaking into his office and taking as much money as they could. He predicted that it would only take them a few minutes for them to get what they wanted before they spread their influence in the village and then they left the village. He ran as he kept on tracking Hinata by her chalker footprint as he heard chuckling in his ear. Come on Hayashi, let's not do that my friend. We should all just assume that Hinata is safe or, or the girl is hiding in a bush in some random train ground. If that is the case, I see rape and slavery in our future. I might be able to even buy her as soon as she enters the black market. As Naruto had several people out of the village that would notify him when things enter the black market that he would be interested in. Yes, Urchimaru was one of the reliable sources, but another source he had was a disgraced samurai. And another one was a runaway Jinjuliki. And another one was a other runaway Jinjuliki. Hayashi was forced to hear Naruto scrambling on and on. About his connection to the criminal underworld, Hayashi could only guess at the time where the council thought that he was dead for all those time. He has been out there gathering forces, making connections, and doing all of this, and planning for Kanoha demise. Make your way to the Akimichi clan, activate your Byakun and find a seal in scroll, seal on the gate. Just like every clan, the Akimichis did not spare any ninjas to watch the gates while they were locked. They had squad rotations on who to guard the entrance. Suppress your chakra and you stealth, Hayashi. I don't think I have to repeat what will happen if you disobey. After all, you've gotten this far, said Naruto. The man obeyed because he had nothing left. 
he had to find his daughters and leave afterwards. He had nothing left within a leaf after his clan had gone into hell. He suppressed his chakra to the point that it was suppressed so much it could hardly be sensed by the best sensors. As he watched a thick bone ninjas on the gate, other side as they were doing a rotation shift. He found the tiny seal as he unsealed a scroll, moving before they could sense the rush of chakra from the unsealing. As he dropped right into an alley after moving off, as a few people exit out of a local shop, they all were ninjas as he hid behind a dumpster. Read it, said Naruto. Hayashi opened the scroll. Out loud, said Naruto. Hayashi grew his teeth being ordered by a person like him, but he swallowed all of his pride. The next level of the game is called Kill the Chef. His blood ran cold at that, as Naruto chuckled in his ear. Keep going. This part is quite simple, all you have to do is break into the Akamichi compound with as little noise as possible. Find the clan head of the Akamichi clan, the chef, and kill him. Rootless or not, I don't really care, but it must be in front of his family. Hayashi gripped the scroll tightly as he breathed out. As he kept on reading, if his family is not present, then put Choza in a pathetic state and drag him out and find his family, and then kill him in front of them. Hayashi trembled, his hands shaking so much. Any of the clan chef mates that come to his rescue are to be put down. If his wife or son came to his rescue, break their arms and legs and let them watch. I am sure you can do it. After all, the Hayu clans are the best after the Uchiha massacre, are they not? If you die before it's completed, Hanabi and Hinata will be sold to the Raikagi for about 15 billion Ryu. He's got the money, I check. Keep on reading, said Naruto. The rules are as simple as a level. Do not speak or sign or gesture to anyone that you are being controlled. In fact, do not say a single word at all. Do not hold back or lastly, do not ignore any command I give you. As he was nothing more, Sayashi turned around. As Naruto started speaking your piece, ah, uh, my turn. I've always wanted to play a first person fighting game, but with all that time in jail, I couldn't, said Naruto. Look at what is inside the storage seal, said Naruto, as Hayashi, on seal up, it was a tube with a black liquid, it broke as it dropped right onto his chest, as Hayashi was surprised when a vest came over him. When you had studied for Jutsu like Naruto, it was not surprising that he could turn a simple, small explosive tag into an entrapment seal There was no wrapping around Hayashi. Hayashi looked down the black flap jacket. That is something I create out of my bloodline, said Naruto. It went under his flowing cloak as it wrapped around the man's chest. I read a book about the major organs of the human body, most of which are located in the torso. It was really boring so I skipped to the end, said Naruto. There are 10 spikes underneath that jacket. As Naruto snapped his finger, Hayashi dropped to his knees as two of those spikes impale him at the side. They just barely miss his intestines and his kidneys. He felt the spikes wiggling inside his body. I will be the one giving you the commands on how to take them down. As Naruto clenched his fist, Hayashi coughed up blood as more of the spikes enter his body. None of his organs were touched, but the spikes wiggled inside of him. They will be a mild pain, but you will be fine, said Naruto. But I can't promise if you disobey me that your organs would not be shredded, said Naruto. As Naruto slapped his forehead, I'm sorry, I'm talking too much. You see, I tend to do that when I get excited. You should get going. Wait, Hanabi said. Wait. As Nurt leaned back in his chair. If I'm going to kill a comrade, wreck a clan, and traumatize a family, I want proof to know that my daughter is alive and healthy. Oh, that's easy, said Naruto. Hanabi, can you come here for a minute? Small heads then feet patted towards the boy as Naruto sat in a wooden chair and there was a lot of monitors in front of him showing different different angles. He beckoned her to come closer. Once she was close enough, he pulled off his headset and handed to her. Your old man wants to talk to you. Her hands shook as she moved away from the terrifying blonde as his lips curled up into a smile. Her clothes was in the same shape that they were in. There was no damage to her body, but she was afraid. It was a psychological damage, not physical. F -f -f father The man heart shuddered how broken she sounded, tired and scared also. As his fist clenched at what that beast was doing to his child. <laughs> Hanabi. As she cried into her piece. Tell him to come and find her and get her. I'm coming for you. 
I'm coming to get you. Do not fear. Be strong. Time's up, said Naruto as he removed the earpiece from her. As she scampered away back into the dark corner of the room, she pulled her knees to her chest as she hid her eyes behind him. As she cried, Nice kid. Surprisingly quiet. I thought Hinata was going to be the crier out of it too, but kidnapping, bring the best out of all of us, said Naruto. I will find. And I will kill you, Haishi swore under his breath. Focus on surviving, buddy. Kill me when you're done. Now, let's get to work. We don't have all day. Time skip chose a set in his bedroom by the window as he sulk and stare. The Akimichi clan used to be so colorful and bright, filled with people that faced the day with a bright happy smile, never once fearing that anything would ever get them down. As he sighed, there wasn't anyone outside of their houses but the four guards at the gate. People were so fearful that someone like Choji, who always find a way to laugh and smile, felt nothing but fear and sadness. The Akimichi was reduced to a clan of scared, frightened men and women because the phantom that was attacking the village, striking down people one after another, had taken out the two key strategists, Shikaku and Shibe. Kasumi was crazy. Inuichi was murdered in a brutal way. Kakashi and his elite squad of Anbus were all wiped out in the worst way possible. Chosen knew the Phantom was prioritizing those that could have set him away from his crime to tell them that he was not the one that was responsible. As he could not look Chosen in the eyes and tell him that the Phantom was someone that used to be trotting across the bakery. A kid, a small 8 year old child that was thrown into prison for something that he was not capable of doing. Something that he could not do but yet he was still thrown in there without mercy and beaten. Kanoha, all of them were to blame. No one knew why though. None of them knew this, none of the children growing up, none of them knew this. It was only the upper heads. There was a knock on the clan head front door. He was surprised, he hadn't heard a knock since. The death of Shibe and Shikaku. As he feared that that knock was bringing another death. Maybe it was someone he knew well. As for Choji, as he was in a bad mood, as he was worried about Shikamaru, he was worried about Ino when there was a knock. As he heard his mother call out, I'll get it. Lord Hayashi, please, come in. Choba Akamichi slow to the stoic look on the Haiga's face as he stood on the other side of the door. Her eyebrow raised as she saw a stoic look in his eyes, his eyes looking empty. He didn't look like he was hurt. He was wearing his standard clothing, but he was wearing a black vest underneath. Honey, what's wrong? Her husband's deep voice rumbled from the kitchen. As his eyes brightened when he saw that he was Hayashi. Hayashi! But years of ninja instincts kicked in as he saw the man's hand tense. He shot forward, no! But it was too late. As the man incapacitated his wife and shoved her to the side. Hayashi did not speak a word. Chose a yell for Choji to run away. As the man fist enlarged, he thrust it forward with a hashi, slipped around the fist as he stabbed the rather large arm six times. The man in the largest other arm as he tried to grab him, but he slide right underneath it as he stabbed that with his fingers six times as well. Choba wanted to scream as she saw the purple wells on the back of her husband's arm as he got hit with a Jayuken strike, but she couldn't see a word as her jaw was tightened. Her entire body was frozen. Choza clenched its fist as he did not reduce the size because if he did so, it would cause massive nerves damage in his hands seeing that the blood flow was swelling up and if he reduced them back now, back to their normal size, it would burst. He had sparred with Hayashi a few times when they were younger so he knew how to hold the man back until reinforcements arrived. He shifted his head back as the blazing fingers came towards his nose. As Hayashi ducked under, the man swinging his body as he hit the man several times on his chest. As the purple whelps came out, Chosa gritted his teeth as Hayashi flipped back as Chosa swinged his leg. Hayashi saw no way of blocking it so he leaned into it as he was slammed into the wall. Naruto barked for him to get up, swearing hell if he slowed down for at least a second. Hayashi looked up as he saw the Ekemichi, only child, looking down at them at the stairs, tears in his eyes. He looked away from Choji as he prayed that Naruto did not see him, but from the giga floating in his ears he knew that Naruto had seen the boy. The dumb kid didn't run, said Naruto. This is good. This is just too good. 
Chosen realizes as well as his fist. He swing this but the slam into Hayashi before the man could attack his son. Hayashi rolled under the blow. As the orders came in, he had no choice as he flashed up the stairs. Choji's eyes went wide as he realized the man was coming after him. No Chosen shouted as he tried to chase after them. But with his size, it was impossible to reach him in time as Hayashi blazed up the stairs towards the young boy. Choba gritted her teeth as she looked towards her son as she had no way of doing anything to help him. But guys, it'd be end up right here. If you want to see next part and do, like, subscribe, comment down below and turn on that bell notification to stay posted. Remember share all of your friends in social media platform. And also stay tuned for those what ifs coming your way. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the series on Anime King, Anime King 2, Anime King 3, which I'll be posting later on for you guys to enjoy. So yeah, without further ado, I'm off now. See you guys soon. Peace.